Okay, so we're using GitHub and Git a lot. It's important to remember that Git and GitHub are not the same thing. Git is a version control tool that lives on your computer. GitHub is a piece of software that lives in the internet. So GitHub is a website, essentially. It's now owned by Microsoft, it used to not be, um, but it's considered a social coding platform. And so that means that you can see other people's code, other people can see your code. You can have private re repositories, but the whole GitHub idea is predicated on being able to work in public and see what's going on. So what is Git? Um, Linus Torvalds, who made um, Git has never really explained what Git stands for. He's been very quiet about that. So let's just assume it's a word. And if we imagine that we've got these three versions of a shopping list, if we were to do the save as many times thing, we would have three whole shopping lists. But Git allows us to track just what's changed from version to version. So if this is version one, and the middle one is version two, and the right one is version three, then the only thing that's changed on this is that instead of cheese, we decided to get guns, which is clearly crazy. So we made a new version and we swapped out guns for apples. Now, I don't know why we didn't change it back to cheese. That would make a lot more sense, but we can do that in the next version. So what Git will do is instead of keeping a track of bread, it's just like, okay, bread hasn't changed. We don't need to worry about that. But in this version, just this version here, this, this line here has changed. And then this line here has changed again. And so what it's doing is tracking the differences or diffs between versions. And so we sometimes call that the delta or the diff or the change. And so um, what that means is we can track a lot of changes without using a lot of file space. And it's also very, very fast. Um, so that's what's very useful about GitHub. Then what we, uh, sorry, about Git, then what we're dealing here with GitHub is that we have our local version of the code. And this is an Octocat. GitHub's whole thing is Octocats. They love them. Um, so our local version of the code, we make some changes, we make some commits. Okay, and so those commits are stored nicely on our, on our computer. They're um, version controlled but we don't have any safety there if we break our computer or we lose our computer or something happens all that work is lost so we want to get it off our computer off to a remote okay so we do some work and then we have our remote over here which is some other octocats and we want to push that to the remote and then eventually someone else help somewhere else can um push some other stuff to the remote and we can pull it back into our local. And so this constant pulling, pushing, pulling, pushing thing is how the whole social aspect of this works because Git's very good at merging two different versions and they could be from different authors. So the flow of that goes, we make a change to a file and then we type git status or in VS code, we can just look at the status thing in the, in the UI, which is nice. And then we can say git add cool file, which is the same as clicking the plus button in VS code. And then we make a commit message. And so that's the same as typing the message in VS code. And so that thing, we just loop around. We can do that as many times as we want. We just, I mean, you want to put different messages in every time, but you're just making changes, um, committing the changes, making changes, committing changes. And then we can type git status whenever we want just to see what's going on. So that's super useful. Um, and then at some point we can push it to the remote. So I would probably, I'd probably make a commit every 10 minutes, something like that when I'm working. And then I'll push every half hour, hour, something like that. And what that means is that at no point have I ever got more than an hour's worth of work that is um, unbacked up, unsafe work. And the nice thing about the Git model is that um, as we're working away, um, if we want to test something out, have this kind of idea that we want to try, but we don't want to break the main code, we can make a branch. 
Okay, so we're going to have the add turtle branch here, for instance. And so we can work away on that. And we're like, okay, that's good. We like the turtles, and then we merge it back in to the master branch. Um, a lot of this stuff is still saying master. Recently, there's been a move away from master to main. Just the term terminology has changed. So sometimes you'll see master, sometimes you'll see main on more recent repositories. So we merge that branch back in, and then we make another make another branch to add fireflies, and then we merge that back in. Now there's a kind of two other projects that come off at this point. One of them is to add walrus and polar bear, and this one is just to add walrus. So this one is the polar bear polar bear branch, and so these two branches are off doing their thing, and then they're getting complicated and then resolved. And then at some point in the future, they might or might not be resolved back into master. We just don't know. So it's really good for teamwork is basically what this is saying. And so when you have done some work, let's say we're on team add walrus and polar bear, we might want to make a pull request. And so we've pulled this off. We've done a load of work on it. And we've asked, so a pull request is us, the people who've done the work, requesting that the people on the master branch pull our work back in. And so we then have a bunch of discussions and we say, no, I'm not going to take that pull request just yet. So work on it a bit more and we work on it, work on it, work on it. And we're like, yep, this is good. I'm cool with this. And then we pull it back into master as a new feature. So some of you will already have pull requests from me on your files. Um, which are trying to fix things that you've done. So if you just accept those pull requests, you're ready to go. And then the other thing that Git and GitHub will give you is this history. And so this file here has been edited by Ishan and by me. Um, and so we can see who's done what in what file, which is really good, particularly useful if you're actually working in a kind of professional environment where you're like, okay, Hey, Ishan, you worked on that file. You changed something. Why did you change it? And he can be like, oh, well, you know, I was asked by this person or that person to change it. And we changed it because it made it better. It made it more readable, whatever. Um, and you've also got this concept of blame. Now, blame is a kind of stupid word. Um, but what that gives you is it says that at all points in your code, you can see the history of every line. And so... This line here was done four years ago. This line here was done three years ago. And you can see what's going on there. So we zoom right out and you can see all of that stuff. Um, and you can see all of the commits, all of that history. And that gives you an idea of how that code has developed over time. 